uh, Skylar here. This last one, what do we got? Yeah, as we mentioned with Kyron Williams, I said I traded Kyron Williams for a Jahan Dotson share, and I felt really good about it. I remember I sent that screenshot to the JDB chat because obviously we're notoriously <laughs> big fans of Jahan Dotson and his game. Yeah. And that one has blown up a little bit in my face here now, and I do want to talk a little bit about Jahan Dotson because there are a lot of manners going out. Now, this offseason, I do want to say as much as we love Jahan Dotson in rookie drafts two years ago, we were exercising caution going into last year. We actually were because we were saying he's getting at a point where people are taking him in the fifth, sixth round of Superflex startup drafts. And for us, that's just where it's it's not worth it. The, the risk is not worth the reward, right? He hasn't proven to be this guy could come in and be your set and forget wide receiver too, but you are drafting him where he almost has to do so. And we, we were saying the case study was a year prior, a wide receiver we also loved in drafts that we felt was a huge value at the beginning of the second round or at the end of the first round was Elijah Moore. And this was a guy who two years ago, he got boosted up to that fourth, fifth, sixth round Super Bowl starter price. And then he really, really hurt a lot of managers coming out of their drafts. So we luckily for you guys, as much as you know, we love Jahan Dotson. We were telling you to pump the brakes on that cost because of Elijah Moore. But now I'm looking two years into the league with Jahan Dotson, where he's wide receiver 55 in the year right now, a year where Elijah Moore is wide receiver 52. And then last year on his rookie year, where he really showed up for us, he was wide receiver 50. And Elijah Moore on the rookie year where we fell in love with him was wide receiver 48. So it's crazy how two guys that we had a lot of similarities in their games coming in, which is why we like both these players, are putting up relatively similar numbers. And it's kind of scary. John Dawson's only had over 20% of the team's targets three times this year. He had over 20% in each of Washington's final five games the five games he played in to finish last year so that is the big part that has me concerned here right we know he's we thought he was a good route runner we knew there was touchdown upside here he had 11 and a half percent touchdown rate last year of course it was going to come down he's at a 1.9 percent touchdown right this year which is pitifully low and the team is averaging the exact amount of passing touchdowns last year as this year so it's not like that number overall has changed on the team I guess I'll push this to Tim because I know you've watched a lot of Washington just being a guy who was in on Sam Howe in the past is like guys like McLaurin. You liked Jahan Dotson on tape just like us. Uh, you, you're a fan of Brian Robinson. I know you, you've watched a lot of Washington. Is it just Washington with Jahan Dotson? Or if we learn now Jahan Dotson is a wide receiver who might have points in his career where he spikes as a wide receiver three, but he's not the type of guy you should ever invest meaningful assets in because at the end of the day, he – doesn't have the elite traits that those undersized guys like Jordan Addison has. I think I'd be buying Dotson, to be honest with you. I understand what you're saying in comparison to Elijah Moore, who was, I was even higher on Elijah Moore than I was Dotson. I thought Dotson would be a nice wide receiver two or wide receiver three on a team. But what we've seen from Dotson, I understand we're talking touchdown percentage, but we, we what we, what we have seen from Dotson when he's been on is that he is a touchdown scorer. And it's very rare for a lot for many wide receivers to be able to to have that label, and so I think with him having the ability to really have that nose for the end zone, I, I believe that this is just kind of a, a weird fluky year with the quarterback situation. For how many times since Sam Howell has played well, that he, basically Terry McLaurin has disappeared as well at the same time. So I think that even bringing in like a Brissett would would be more beneficial to like the overall health of the wide receiver performances. So I think it's only it's only going to be nose up for these guys if they end up moving on from Howell. But I also think that there's growth within Howell's game as well. So I think that Dotson, for me, if it's anything that's not considered significant draft capital, because once again, we're talking about third and fourth round picks, right, before, that that paradigm is going to shift so bad in the direction that these, these picks are going to be so overvalued. I would be hunting out trades or moves to to try to go get guys like Dotson because Dotson may un, end up always being at best a wide receiver three, but he's a wide receiver three with wide receiver high wide receiver two volume or uh, val value on a week to week basis where he can put up those points because he can score multiple touchdowns. So for me, I, I'm taking the risk of moving the guys that are going to be in the third and fourth round, not hitting versus a guy that I've already seen do it. And we've also seen that in the year that he has suffered compared to what our expectations were, most of the other players in that offense has too. Like you were, I forget if it was Skyler or if it was Jake that said this, that basically Sam Howell is what top 10 in the league in, in fantasy points, but like he doesn't have like top 24 wide receivers. Like how does that work? Yeah. I was throwing that out there. He doesn't have, he didn't have a top 18 tight end. He didn't have a top 24 wide receiver. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even have a top 
12 running back. Like it, it, it's, it, it's crazy how we got no value. We got, and we got like an eight week stretch of Brian Robinson in the middle of the season and nothing else, nothing beyond spike weeks from anyone else on that offense. Despite ha- Sam Howell, 14 weeks through the season being like the quarterback, like six or whatever he was at that point, it, it blew my mind how Washington was operating. It was the most meaningless stats in all of fantasy football it blew my mind and it was the most aggravating thing ever. And I think that's where I'm kind of with you, Tim, where I don't have exact numbers for you guys yet. We're hopefully by the time March rolls around, we're going to have very specifics of where we value all of these players versus upcoming draft picks. We're going to have sheets. We're going to have a bunch of stuff for that. If you want to join our discord, it's free down there. We're going to have tons of conversations. Mock drafts are going to be going all the time. We'll have very concrete valuations of these players versus this upcoming draft class. But right now, any back half second, and beyond, I would probably rather have Jahan Dotson because I believe in the player. For us, he was a late first course in a class without quarterback. So take that what you will, maybe an early second type actual value at his draft time. His situation's bad. I don't know if it necessarily gets better. So the only air of caution I have with Jahan Dotson, you shouldn't be acquiring him on a team where you're saying he's now my wide receiver four. I need him to be my wide receiver four. And that was my problem I had with people in last year when he crept in that sixth round. He had to be your wide receiver two or your wide receiver three. And if you had him on a team where he had to be your wide receiver two, wide receiver three, you had a terrible season. You banked on a player who did not help you. And I think John Dawson could have another year where he just does not help you. But similar to how, and I have a little bit more hope for Jahan maybe than Elijah just because we are a year further in Elijah's career but even Elijah Moore to an extent if we're on that late second early third which I think gets done at points of this offseason depending on your league and your lead mates and how excited they get for this rookie class they're players I just like to have on the end of my bench when it's not a guy I'm going to depend on it's not a guy I need to score me points they are players that I love to stash it's it's tough to it's it hurts me to call Jahan Dotson a stash but whenever you can invest in Jahan Dotson or Elijah Moore is even cheaper as a stash, a guy to sit down there at the end of the bench, if you have the luxury of having a deeper bench in your dynasty league, I'm still in on Jahan Dotson. I still like the player. I still think he's got the ability to score touchdowns and not a lot of wide receivers have. And um, I'm, I'm not out yet. So I agree with you, Tim. I, I just want to phrase the question to see if you would go a different way with it on Jahan Dotson to open the conversation. Um, but, but that is where I stand. It's not a guy that I would invest in with the intention of counting on him. Cause there's other players I do invest in where I'm counting on them, right? If I'm moving, uh, you'd have to move a little bit more, but we're moving in on players like Chris Godwin, Amari Cooper. I need them to score me points. Like I, I am getting those guys cause they are point scorers where I'm not putting that same expectation on John Dawson. And I think we see this a lot in dynasty because there are, are a lot of these young guys It's such an ageist game that a lot of your rankings or your trade calculators have these young guys valued so high, but at the end of the day, we need points and these guys could break out and end up scoring way more points, but there's no guarantee in it. But if you invest in them to the point where they have to score you points or you're a bad team, it's probably a bad investment. It's why we always love when you have these young guys if you do end up selling them, okay, give me a guy who's going to give me points and then give me the picks. Don't just do straight picks. If I'm selling off of a veteran, maybe a higher wide receiver, and instead of just getting straight picks, throw me the, the Jahan Dawson with that pick, right? I, I, I don't have a name for the top. If you are selling Brandon Ayuk and the guy's willing to give you more than a first, he's willing to give you a first and a, a third or first and a second, and you can get Jahan Dawson thrown into that deal, I love it. Because we're investing in young guys that have talent, but they don't have to score us points. And I, I just see that a lot where people show me their 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 startups or you know their teams going into season, their young teams, their rebuilding teams. And there's a lot of these young guys. And I'm like, I love it. But there isn't a guarantee that this team's going to be good because you are depending on these guys. Even a player we love, like a Garrett Wilson, there was no guarantee the guy was going to get you those points you needed. And then if you were moving off of Last year, you know, top top wide receiver, um, you know, like going in for for on his rookie year. If that time you're moving off of Devontae Adams, I would have loved to have grabbed the pick to get the Garrett Wilson and and a pick or and a veteran, 
right? It's not just going in and demanding that these young guys come in and give you points because there just isn't that guarantee. Obviously, I think Gary Wilson is a, he's a higher tier, but I'm just I'm still saying just in general with these young players that aren't in set situations that don't have the sample size. I, I just I just want some points with it because your your team was bad. If you if you invested in Jahan Dawson in the sixth round this year, your team stunk. If you invested in Elijah Moore in the sixth round of your startup two years ago, your team stunk. So I just want to air that caution. A player people might love this year. Uh, he's probably worth a little bit more, but he might be in that conversation like a Zay Flowers, right? You shouldn't be going out and buying Zay Flowers where it's like, well, he's my wide receiver too. My team's great. If you have to have wide receiver two production from Zay Flowers to be a good team next year, you're in a really scary spot. I would try to find other ways to kind of hedge against that and find other value, whether it's bringing in veterans on the cheap that can potentially be there if Zay Flowers doesn't come in and is a wide receiver two next year, that could work. If it could be potentially selling Zay Flowers, unfortunately, at a high point, a high price in the offseason and bringing in another young guy you believe in, but then adding a veteran or another pick just to just to hedge against it, I think that also works. Yeah, you know, I, I'm more in on Jahan Dotson than not. Um, you look at what changed for him last year, it's basically a different QB and a new offensive coordinator. Is that what made this happen? I, I don't know. Like, I, it's where that's where my mind goes, just because that's that's the difference between last year and this year. Now we've got a QB who, you know, I think spreads the ball around a lot, and then an offensive coordinator who has his system. And yeah, and with Eric Bieniemy, you know, he has his system, and it sounds like he might stick around even if Ron Rivera doesn't. So like, there's some concern there that maybe Jahan Dotson isn't quite going to have a role that we like in Eric the enemy's offense. I don't know, but like, I do just look back at the scouting profile we did on him really like that. Really like what he was able to show as a rookie, even while battling through some injuries. So yes, I'm more out or more in than out. I agree with the valuations you guys were throwing out there. <laughs> 